Hello there, I'm Aldra Hill, and welcome to some John Schaefer's At The Gates. This is it, the culmination of seven years of work by John Schaefer. If you're not sure who that is or what I'm talking about, John Schaefer was the lead designer for Civilization V. He also moved to Paradox, working on an undisclosed project, and then left to finally finish his game At The Gates. He also recently published a little bit about the sheer journey it took him to actually make this game. And I've really been looking forward to it. It's a really in-depth strategy game, and it honestly is difficult to describe, so I'm just going to start a game, and we can just start playing it. You pick it, you're basically, it's set at the kind of decline of the Roman Empire, and to win, you basically need to capture Rome or take it over from within. And it's it, it's really interesting. The way in which the design elements all kind of form together is something I've never really seen in a game before, so I'm really excited to show you guys how it works. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Goths, which is definitely the easiest. You have unique abilities, 15 food, 100 treasure. It's like not very much, to be honest, difference. Saxons are slightly different, and you also get a free galley, but I don't, I, I don't want galleys. So let's go Goths. And you can unlock new guys by capturing their capitals. So it's hard. So let me explain this game a little bit as it's loading. So you basically need to start at the lowest end of tech and progress your way up bit by bit by bit by bit. Retraining and training and disciplinizing, disciplinizing? Different clans as they come and they gain experience in certain in certain industries and certain things. You start out just kind of gathering barley and then maybe eventually build a farm, but it'll degrade. And then eventually you'll move your settlement once you've depleted the resources in your area. But then eventually you'll find where you can settle forever and you can work the resources forever. It's it's an ordeal. It's it's something. Um, and there it is. Okay. Oh my goodness. Are you for real right now? Is that a... Is that a barbarian? What the hell? <laughs> okay, so we've started with some deer, some honey, and some stones. Oh my god, and wood. So this is really interesting. So this is the initial thing you have, and you have three clans that can work with us. So let's look at our first guy. We've got uh, Clan Roch, and they are local and charismatic. So local means, oh, this is one thing about the game, you can, everything is tip upable. So you can click on that, go here, and then go there. And then go there and just do it forever. It's really good. So local. Reveals the location of nearby deposits. And reveals the location of nearby deserted locations. And likely to get upset within a year if forced into an active profession outside the settlement. Oh, okay. It only wants to be inside. Generally, within a year. Okay. But they do reveal locations. So that's pretty cool. And charismatic. Morale for all their, all their clans in the same tile increase. Oh, so he increases morale. And so, so he's a social profession. So basically, I'm going to be using this guy for like i guess like training in terms of like lore and research we'll explain later hello ec welcome to stream thank you for joining me i'm recording this on youtube i'm streaming this on stream obviously okay so that's pretty good i have no way he'll be already we got clown rigobert who's already really happy he's eloquent so he also trains in social professions faster and also no other clans can commit crimes crimes really suck i'm from south london dc and we have loyal his mood is never worse than happy Wow, this guy is great. But he's eloquent, so I'll probably train him as an, an explorer at the start. And then we have reclusive and greedy. So active professions, halved. Oh, great. Can't be trained in social professions and never has desires. Brilliant. He's greedy. Resource production decreased by 10%. Oh, well. Um, but what are you going to do? Okay, so I immediately know what I'm going to do here. So first, my first thing is I need, to get, I need to get food, I need to get wood, and I need to get exploring. So initially, the things I'm going to want are harvesting that and harvesting that. Those are my two initial sources of food. God, that's loud. Let's turn the game down a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, what we can do is we can actually put notes on these guys. And we're going to put this guy as lore. I want to put this guy as explorer. And this guy is going to be food. So... I think I'm going to go the expl... Mm, I guess it would make sense to go food first. So food, we're going to get a reaper. No, no, a gatherer. Actually, we also, we do kind of want to consider a hunter. Hunters don't require anything to train, do they? And we already have an identified source of food. Or of meat. So we can get a hunter and get five food per turn. Oh, you know, it's only deer, so it's four food. Or we can do a gatherer and get three honey. So it's better to get the hunter. So we're going to get a hunter. And this is actually honor, interestingly, not food, weirdly enough. So we're going to go hunter for this guy. We can only train one per turn. 
Um, and in terms of professions, I can now research these professions. As you can see, you start out with this, and then you get, like, agriculture and stuff. Um, I'm not... However, each one has a thing that allows you to automatically get two free levels in that discipline. So I kind of want to avoid that until I know I'm going to have a, dis a dedicated fooder. Uh, I also want to try and get a digger at some point. But today what we're going to do, we're going to go discovery here. And then that way I'm going to train the guy for lore making. I think that'd be really good. So let's go discovery. Great. Great first turn. I'm happy with that. Take a little sip of my drink and wait for the turn to go. There are tons of random stuff around me. So it's late April. Uh, we've just got a new dude already. Um, we have Tan Kiel. He is aesthetic, which means his mood is always content. He doesn't eat much food. He can't be ennobled, can't be trained social. So no social. And he's fastidious. And training time is doubled. Resource production increased by half. What? That's so good. That's really good. And one move point and one power. Kind of wish this guy was the hunter. But that's fine. Alright, well this hunter, I'm going to move him to this, and he's going to start to forage next turn. So we can switch disciplines. This should really come up with a pop-up, and it doesn't. It's kind of annoying. For discovery, um, I'm going to be making this guy lore. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to train this guy in social. Nice. So he's, he has the bonus points in social stuff. But then we're also going to train a new dude. So we can either make this guy an explorer or start working on more food. And I think it makes it makes more sense to try and start getting food together. Doesn't that? Or perhaps even wood. I if maybe we should go for wood instead. Just start cracking that wood up. Tell you what, let's train the explorer and see if we get another guy who could be better at wood. So we'll train this guy. And we'll make him an explorer. That takes two turns. We got a little bit of time. Um, and I think at this point, we will have someone who will be able to do agriculture. So I will go agriculture. And that will give us some bonuses. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, we got afraid of fire and handy. He is handy, which means he starts with three levels in crap. What is that logo, man? Jesus. He's afraid of fire, which means training time doubled in metalworking. And he sucks at metalworking. That's fine, which means we're going to make him a wood dude. Awesome. So we got this guy. He's going to start getting food. And now we are rich in food, my friends. Oh, baby, that's good. Okay. We can give, now we can make this guy our food. Agriculture. Nice. And then we're going to study a profession. And we're going to do crafting for that wood collector. This is efficient. I love, I love me some efficiency, guys. Alright, so we got that food. We got a nice explorer here. And we're just going to kind of look around. Oh, man, look at all this stuff. A lot of bandit camps around us, which is a problem for me. But there's also a ton of logging camps for some reason. That's so weird. We can switch to crafting here. I'm going to call this guy, uh, Woodsman. I'm going to give this guy two extra in crafting. And I'm going to... I'm going to try and get some more food. We're going to train this guy, because you... Because food runs out in winter, you can't really be gathering stuff in winter. But wood you can do whenever you like. Uh, mostly. So... I'm going to train this guy, and he's going to be a gatherer, because there's some honey here. And for profession... You could go loggers. And it requires wood to do that, so we can't do that just yet. Um, so I could actually now start to go bards or lore keepers. If I went bards, I would produce fame. More fame means more chance for um, new clans to come, new dudes to come and join us. Let me... Is there a, how, do, how do I expand that? There's a way I can see to expanding this, isn't there? I swear there is. Ah, it's this. Yeah. Okay, so you have 12 in your stockpile. You're increased by 4 a turn. Once you reach 16 fame, a new guy will join you. And the next guy will arrive 3 turns after. Because I make 4 a turn, and that would get me 6 more. So I would get a lot of people. The only thing is, I would then start to run out of food. So maybe I shouldn't go too heavy. I could go surveyors and try to expand and discover things. 
But the problem is the guy I have right now does not want to do that. He increased the production of all foragers by half. They are also easily upgraded, making them important when making your economy. Each economy has several foragers. Okay. Um, I mean, gathering is foraging, isn't it? So, ah, uh, foraging isn't hunting, though. No, it is. So maybe we should go guides. And this is a settled production. Let me just go to our dudes here. This guy is lore. And yeah, he just wants to stay in. So we're going to train this guy and we're going to make him a guide. It is settled, right? Yeah, cool. And this will basically just make our, our stuff better. It'll slow us down in the long term, but... Okay, so we just got a nice gatherer. We're going to move her there. And now she's going to start gathering. Look at that. Look how much food that is. So much food. And this looks like a dead end. Got a new dude. He's easily cold. So if he's in the winter, he has to spend a winter inside a settlement or a residence. So we want it to be inside something. Definitely inside something. An adventurous. He wants an active... What? He wants an active profession. So, sorry, sorry. He'll get upset if he's not inside in winter, and upset if he is inside. Sure. He's adventurous, he wants an active profession with move point and vision range. Can't dig in, can't in camp. What? He can't in camp? So, in camping is really important because it means he's literally going to die. It's the only way to regain supply in the winter. So, literally, I'm just not going to be able to do anything with this person. Son of a... Okay, well... If, it, if I do the, it's half a month is each turn. So I have to move this piece of shit, otherwise he's gonna get all pissed off. You hate the cold, but you love to go out, yeah. Oh my god, this sucks. Um oh, that's terrible. But I I wanna start working on wood, so let's get some let's get wood. I'll make him a digger, because we can start getting these these stones. There we go. It's all in, like the initial phases, you know. We're getting some really nice food. Uh, our food production actually just shut down a little bit. Why? Is it cold? Oh, it's because we just got more clans. That's why. Yep, there's nothing there. <laughs> Literally nothing there. Okay, right, so now we got a wood collector. So we're gonna go here, and we'll start gathering wood. And we just got a caravan. Holy Christ! Uh, normally there's less. That's cool. And so the caravan's a great way of trading and equalizing your economy a bit. So if I wanted to, I could try and buy um, some initial stuff to set things up. I will definitely upgrade the caravan, however, with the 10 gold that I have. I'm fine for food. I'm really fine for food. I'm not going to sell any food, though. I could try to get buy some parchments. I think I will buy some parchments. It's very useful for later. And I think I'm probably going to have a lot of stone resources. I'm going to have wood soon, so I'm just going to keep this treasure. Next up, um, it would be good if I could train this son of a bitch in something at least slightly useful. Let's make them a digger. They're not going to be a very useful digger, but better than nothing. Okay, you can train guides. All right, and you're going to get me some wood. Beautiful. And you, my friend, are going to give me metalworking. This is some good stuff. We got a really good start. Obviously, our food issues are kind of becoming worse as we get more people. Confident and aesthetic. So aesthetic, again, no social, no ennobles, no feuds. Really good. And he's confident, which means morale increased by half. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, you know, I actually might make this guy the metalworker. Well, this guy's the... Let's go here and see what happens. See what happens. Just trying to avoid these, these barbs. So, switch disciplines. Two levels in metalworking. It's going to have to be this asshole. Alright. And then we got someone who's idle, and we're going to train this guy to be a guide to try and increase the efficiency of our stuff. We could try and get miners, because that could make... Uh, took mines out of timber or stone blocks and they produce more than foraging but i think i think i'm not there yet and the dredger would actually increase the production of your diggers but that requires tools so we need blacksmiths for iron first 
What do we actually want here? We don't have really have any livestock at the moment. I mean, there are trappers, but we're going to eat all of that, those horses. Like, there's no point doing anything else. We could try and get beekeepers. Double production of honey. And there's settled production. I have a lot of honey. Well, I only have a little bit, actually, so it's not that worth it. This is the problem. It's just not super worth it for any of these things right now. I might just start trying to get some of, like, some of that, some farmers and stuff. Just get that together. Let's see what happens. It is early August. We're going to start getting cold soon. Oh, God. Are you serious? They're right here. No, Siri, Siri, please. I was just saying the word serious. I can say the word serious and not be Siri. All right, go away. So my my food and wood... Yep, it just went up. Great. We met Crocus of the Alemany. God, that's loud. Christian, they're cruel and cynical, so this is their traits. They relish opportunities to be vicious and abrasive, and they don't believe in much in this world, and aren't inclined to offer anyone the benefit of the doubt. They say a cocky approach, a diplomatic behavior, and so you have relationship levels, you have influence, and reputation. So they want me to offer a token so I can say very well, and I would gain an influence and reputation level, but I would lose reputation. If I refuse, my reputation goes up, and they hate me. But I kind of need to keep them on my side, so I will give them some treasure. I really don't want to be messed around by them. We're going to identify this deposit. And with these guys, we're just going to kind of keep moving. Okay. We've got a guide, and we're going to train this guy, I think, in... to be another digger. Just so we can start having a look at this. There's not a huge amount of food. I hope we start getting someone who's good at combat. My hope. Uh, okay, so now we can just produce treasure because I don't have anything else to do. And I'm just going to kind of kind of randomly start getting stuff to so make a blacksmith. And just, you know... Ryan stuff out. We have a really nice supply of food. Meek and disfigured. That's literally the opposite of what I want. Can't be trained in social professions. Discipline in all disciplines doubled. That's pretty good. Can't be trained in social. It's fine. And meek, morale halved. Can't be trained in social. Never has desires. No feuds. Okay. Oh, hello there. They're basically useless. Um. It's got some horses. Got some pigs. Got meat. Pass. There's not a huge amount of things I want. I could try to get some tools. I might buy 10 tools because I can make some dudes out of them. I also might try and buy some... I'm also going to upgrade the caravan again. Just because I can get it upgraded in advance. Um, and I guess we'll make this guy into something useful. Although what I don't know. He's a bit garbage to be honest. He's a bit garbage. Uh, let's make him a wood collector then. Okay, the problem is we're going to have to move past this if I want to get anywhere. And these are actually just neutrals. They're actually not a problem. The thing is, there is wood. There's a lot of wood here. So if I move my borders in here, since these are the gold stick rooms, that means they're just static in shape. It's the map is completely procedurally generated. It's generated every single time. It's a completely randomized map with certain features and terrains, you know. So, although I am literally here, the idea is that once you've gathered resources, you then you, know, you can strip your area, you then move on. The thing is, I think this would actually still be a good area to move to. Once I've stripped this, I think I might then just go over here. Um, because then I can use these, I can get this small deposit of honey, three wood camps, for God's sake, that's a lot, I'll probably destroy one of them, some wheat, and there's also some berries here, and if the borders extend far enough, I could probably get these horses too, or whatever those animals are, so this would be a pretty good first place. I kind of want to move away from these douchebags. Uh, there's not, not a lot here, ah, I crossed the stream, damn it. There's a supply shortage for this guy because it is cold. It's starting to get cold now. Which means people are gradually not being able to do anything due to supplies. 
We can now train blacksmiths. We're gonna encamp this. He's, he's encamped currently. We found stone. All right, nice. Now we're gonna be working on getting some stone. We've also got another wood cutter, and we're gonna go this way and start gathering wood. Still not really anything to do here. Um, thing is, we could try and maybe make, get some miners. That would get a lot more stone a lot more quickly. So I think that might be a good idea to try and get some miners. And I think just to try to produce... So, and also if we want to... We can ennoble a clan. I don't even know what that does. 10 cloth, 5 armor. They gain him 1 move boost and produce 5 fame return and 5 discipline. Oh, and some advanced professions of themselves, noble. Fair enough. That sounds cool. Never, I've never had that, so... And you can declare a kingdom and basically settle down permanently, which is really good. So we're gonna just use treasure. Okay. This is a good start. I think I need to start trying to build a, mil a military unit pretty soon. All right, it's now winter, which means... Okay, you can forage. So these guys are just... I, okay, interesting enough, these guys actually can still gather. That's good. This guy can't, though. If I want to fortify, I actually need five weapons. Ah, oh, I should have built those weapons. Uh, caravan's up for three turns. Because if I could extend my borders a bit, I could actually get some good stuff. Crap, I should have bought some weapons. I should have bought some weapons. No. It means this guy is basically screwed. So Clan Hubert desires something. Uh, he's obsessed with the idea of finding a warm place in settled settlements. Uh, I am gonna satisfy that desire, unfortunately. I don't want him pissed off. Okay, so we have a barb camp over here. We got honey, what, some kind of crop. God, this place is freaking awful. Once again, I'm just gonna have to keep making treasure because I'm not, I'm not making much here. I think maybe I should train them over to be a lore maker so I can get some more dudes. This is freaking killing me. Up you go. Ah, nothing there. Damn it, I was hoping there'd be more. Where's the... There he is. There you go. Desire has been granted. So, what we could do is we could now train them to be something else. Problem is we have no iron with which to do anything with. So... We could try and make a mine. Let's turn them into a miner. Actually, no. Let's turn this person into a... I haven't researched it. Oh my god, I forgot to research it. Son of a... Alright, you can be a miner. Should have researched it. So we want bards. There's also tinkers. 20 knowledge! That's not bad at all. Now see, I can see if you get an early thing like that, you can get a ton of knowledge just from doing that. Alright, let's trade. Let's get bards. That gives us extra fame so we can get people faster. The only problem is we don't have a lot of food. Okay, fecund and miserable. Great. So miserable will refuse to attack enemy armies. Mood is never better than upset. Oh my god, what? Morale reduced, no experience in disciplines. But he's fecund, which means family growth rate increased, resource production increased by a quarter. Okay, that makes up for the miserable. All right. And then construction structures increased as well. And max health increased by half. Okay, so they're not happy, but that's all right. There you go. That way we can have some, that way we don't have to deal with supply issues. There we go. Just gotta get around this mountain. There are there definitely are some places we could move to then, which is good. Okay. Let me go back to foraging for stone, please. And that wood has just become exhausted. So we're going to have to move here. We're basically strip mining everything. 
Got some berries. Alright, oh, I just realized we've run over a bit. That's it for this episode, guys. Do be sure to let me like and a comment on this video. Let me know what you think of the series if you want to see more Epic Games or any other games like it. I was Alger, and continue to be. And thank you so much for checking this out. Bye bye.